Hi, we are Matthias Nettesheim and Reinhard Treves, both researchers at the University of Tübingen. Today we're going to look at a phenomenon that can literally pull the rug from under you. For this we're going to play a lot with sand and water and look at how the mixing ratio of those can sometimes really prove disastrous. So we have these three cups and we have one cup with no water, one cup that gets a little bit of water and one with a lot of water. To those, we'll add sand. And now we're going to flip these over and see what happens. And the first one just collapses. This one holds a shape. And this one is a real mess. Any kid could have told you that, that if you add too much water to sand, the structure will just collapse. But even grown-up engineers can sometimes have the same problem. You'll see a picture that was taken after a 7.5 magnitude earthquake in the city of Niigata, a city in Japan. What do you think happened in the picture? And how does this relate to what we just saw? Now take a few minutes to discuss these questions. We'll be back shortly and see how you did. Welcome back! We hope you had some interesting ideas. One main factor in how sand will behave is the presence of water. Dry sand may be trickling down an hourglass, or it will be blown across a desert. Wet sand, however, can be very sticky, or it can be fluid and run through your fingers, like when you dig it up at the sides of a river. Quicksand is an extreme example, that is sand mixed with water. It's so liquid that you would sink into it if you stepped on it. And this is what happened to the buildings you saw in the picture in the last segment. The soil liquefied, that's the term we're going to discuss in this class, and they tilted over. To better understand soil liquefaction, we need to clarify two terms, soil saturation and consolidation. Would you say this flower pot is full? It's full of soil. See and observe. I can pour water. And it's completely taken up. If it was full, how could I add something more? That's what I'm wondering. Well, it's actually not entirely filled with soil. There are small spaces of air in between the soil grains and when I pour water, water replaces this air. When the, all the air has been replaced, we say the soil is fully saturated. Now to the second term, consolidation. This is a sandstone I picked up on the Swabian Alp close to where we live. And this is just a pile of sand. The difference between those is consolidation. The sand grains have been pressed together over millions of years under very high pressures now they stick together. This sand is unconsolidated, which means there is no much force between the grains, and they are very loose. Uh, nicely said, but what, what does that mean? Well, remember the three cups of sand from the beginning? Unconsolidated sand will just flow apart, but consolidated sand will hold its shape. Now that you're familiar with the terms soil saturation and consolidation, can you come up with everyday examples of those? Also, consolidation doesn't always take millions of years. There are ways to consolidate faster. Can you come up with one? We'll be right back and see how you did. Welcome back. 
Earlier we learned about the terms soil saturation and consolidation. Soil saturation means how much pore space is taken up by water instead of air. And consolidation means how well the individual grains stick together. We can't build houses out of sand, so we can either let nature do the work, take sandstones and use those for building our houses, or we take concrete, which is a very fast and very efficient way of making sand stick together. We saw and discussed earlier that soil fully saturated with water may sometimes behave like a fluid, and this can be very disastrous. But to better understand this, we need to have a closer look at a model. Here we have sand mixed with water. This is not soil exactly, but it will behave in a very similar way. I don't we see any water. Well, here the water is in between the pore spaces, so you can't really see it. But what do you think will happen when I shake this? I have no idea. Let's do it. Let's find out. Oh wow, look at this! All the water is at the surface! Yeah, the grains have been compacted and the water has been pushed from in between the grains to the surface. Well, how, can, how can this happen? How is this possible? Does this have anything to do with the pictures we saw in the beginning, like during the earthquake? Yes, of course! Earthquake is also very strong shaking and this is what will happen when during earthquake you get soil liquefaction. The, gray, the water moves from between the pore spaces to the surface and with that, we can see that the water is now behaving like a liquid because it's moving with the water and the water puts pressure on the soil as well. I understand. Now it's up to you. We are going to do an experiment together and see what happens to unconsolidated sand during an earthquake. We have all the things we need for this experiment already here. This is a plastic cup. I cut off the bottom and I place it on this plate. Now you may pour some sand, but just leave some space at the top. Sure. Uh, careful, and uh, a little bit of space at the top. Voila. Now I flatten the sand with my finger, but I make sure not to compact the sand. And finally, I place this metal weight on top of it. But, but, sorry, what, what's the weight for? Oh, that may represent a building. You might see what happens to it later. Now we will pour water into the plate. Think about what will happen. And as always, first think and make a prediction, then do the experiment and see if the observations match your predictions. That's interesting, I see some water coming up here. It's getting wet, although you didn't pour anything at the top. Okay, now think about the second thing. What will happen if I tap this cup slightly at the edge? Hopefully you will have time to do the experiment on your own now. We'll be back shortly and see how you did. Hi, welcome back. How did it go? Can I do the tapping for our experiment? Of course. I so. see that it has changed color, so the sand is wet. Uh, what do you think will happen when I tap? Well, maybe the building will move, maybe nothing will happen, but we saw that water may come up as well. Water may come up. Right, I'll do the tapping. Oh, see oh. our building is sinking. Just like in the pictures. So we have an example of soil liquefaction here. As before, when there was shaking or you're tapping, the water was pushed from between the pore spaces. And now with this additional pressure, the soil liquefied. I can see that. And the building, which was on top, in this liquid soil sunk down. And just as we saw in the picture, it tilted over. Wow, if this happens in reality, that's very bad. What do you think can we do to avoid this? Well, this is a very good question. And you might be wondering the same. So, 
You might change your experiment, but try to remember the three things that are most important for soil liquefaction to occur. Unconsolidated sediment, saturated with water, and sudden pressure from earthquake shaking. How could you change your experiment to change one of uh, these three factors? Well, take a minute and we'll be back shortly. Welcome back! How did it go? So we have learned that liquefaction occurs whenever sediments are unconsolidated, whenever sediments are saturated, and whenever there is strong shaking, as is the case during earthquakes. If this is happens, buildings can sink into the soil. And we want to avoid that. So did you find any way? Did you find a way, Matthias? Well, I thought of compacting the sediment before placing the sinker. That means before building on top of it first. Another option might be to actually drain the sediment, have less water in there. Well, we didn't have time, but if you have time, you can redo your experiment and see whether that has any effect. You may use different materials, so maybe reduce the weight of your building. Come up with ideas. Well, in real life, we all, everyone faces this problem. So geologists and geotechnical engineers came up with methods to actually build in, in spite of this risk. But the best thing, if you have a high risk for liquefaction, probably just don't build. Well, that's true. But actually, there might be some cases where you still have to build, where there's no other option. So there might be option of compacting sediment at the excavation site, of reinforcing your foundations before building there, or um, move away from highly saturated soils. Remember that the most common areas where soil liquefaction can occur are in coastlines, marshes, everywhere where there's lots of water available. So think about your area. Is there a risk of liquefaction? How would you know? How would you find out? Who would you ask about it? Do you have an idea whether there's a risk here? I actually don't, but I'm surely going to find out. It's important to inform yourself. Thanks for watching the lesson. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hi, thanks for checking out our video lesson on soil liquefaction. I'm Matthias Nettesheim, researcher at the University of Tübingen. You might be wondering what should be happening between the breaks that we take during the video lessons. Please know that you're very flexible on how you use this material. As long as you keep your students engaged and interested and cover all the materials that are covered in this class. Just before the breaks, we usually ask students questions and you can um, encourage them to discuss this in class or in small groups. In the first break, we've asked your students to think about soil liquefaction and we provided a photo. You can replace this photo with any other image of soil liquefaction that might be related to the area you're living in. You can discuss it in class or break your students up in smaller groups. But at this stage, just encourage your students to come up with ideas. There are no right or wrong answers. Just keep them engaged in proposing ideas and keeping them involved in the lesson. We try to ask questions which relate to everyday life. So, Everyone has, ex has experience from, the, from whatever they live. So if you live near a beach, students will know how sand mixed with water will behave there. If you have a marsh close by, they will take that as, that as an example. So please feel free to make this more regional specific if you have good examples for that. You could also replace the image we showed at the beginning with something from your area if soil liquefaction happens. For the experiment, there are several things to uh, consider. Please make sure, uh, please be aware that this is quite messy, so you could cover up the tables with newspaper before conducting the experiment. This, uh, the sand needs to be unconsolidated in order for the sinker to actually move down. And make sure you have a sinker that is heavy enough. It's just, there needs to be a density contrast, so it, mean it has to be heavier than the sand and water mixed. Changing the different setups might actually happen quite naturally, because all the different groups might have some variations in there. This isn't wrong or right in some way, but it actually helps to understand what are the important factors that 
make soil liquefy or keep it stable. So you could use this and discuss in class why some experiments were successful in sinking, whereas others uh, didn't experiment soil, like, uh, soil liquefaction. Please familiarize yourself with the terms used in this lesson, also some of the additional concepts. I, ex I for example, had to look up how engineers actually do soil compaction at excavation sites. But your students might come up with questions like that, so um, you might prepare a little bit in advance. In any way, just keep your students engaged. There aren't any right or wrong ways to do this experiment. Just as long as you keep them engaged and interested in what's covered in this class, this is the main factor. There is a lot of additional information to be found on the internet. For example, YouTube videos on soil liquefaction animations and other types of experiments. Please also check out the additional information with this, uh, provided with this video. And thanks for staying with us and taking this opportunity to do this nice experiment in your class. Good luck.